Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Handmaid's Tale Season 2, Episode 1, it's called June. So, full spoilers for the episode of course, as always. Uh, first thing in the title is a nice callback, because Episode 1 of last season was called Offred. So, it? it's a nice touch, sense. especially since when you get to the end of this episode, thematically, this season being set up as a very different thing, it works really well with the titling of the, the two episodes. Yeah, because obviously, you know, I've seen some stuff since since the end of last season. I saw, you know, how we left off last season with her mm-hmm. getting in the van. That's the end of the book. Which is, which I think, because I was thinking about that during when I was watching this. It's worth mentioning there was two episodes that went up. Episode two, we'll be doing that separately. Uh, yeah, that'll go up sometime tomorrow. But what was interesting to me, I was thinking about that during this, and I was thinking, oh, I wonder, you know, before I watched it, is this going to feel like a continuation where there was like not supposed to be one before? And I have yeah. to give them credit. I, not for a second did it feel like, oh, we've tacked on a new thing after it was supposed to end. Because yeah, d- definitely not yet, at least. Because I, I don't think the ending of season one felt like an ending. You know, at, you know, for the show, it didn't feel like an actual ending. Ending the same way that right. in the book, maybe it was like, you know, maybe in the book it was reworded or the way it was presented yeah, it, was more. The idea of it was supposed to be really ominous as to whether yeah. or not she was being arrested or set free. Yeah. Um, whereas here we go obviously there's a specific path we go down and I think first and foremost within like three minutes it reminded me of how awful it could make me feel at any given point in time <laughs> because yeah, because the opening where she's in the van and it turns out all the handmaids from this sector are all in the vans and they're all been taken, uh, it turns out to be a stadium but everything is they're being taken is they're, being, they're getting their Hannibal Lecter masks on <laughs> and they're getting taken into what turns out to be like a football stadium and there's just you know these gallows set up uh, with just rows of you know I, I will say the first noose. half of the episode felt like it went a little bit yeah what is the plural of nooses I, that's what i was that's why i paused i was like, what's the plural of noose yeah yeah i realized that's why you yeah because yeah. I'd, I'd gone ahead i was like yeah you're right what is the plural I, I i'm going to say it's just noose it's a row of noose not not nooses maybe you know, nooses just sounds weird to me i feel like when there's too many s sounds like that you they make the call and they say no we'll just keep it as noose you might be right on this one yeah. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know enough to argue. So I was going to tell us it's actually niece or something like that. It's, it's, it's a row of niece. I'm like, <laughs> that's the one thing I'm confident it's not. So if someone tells us <laughs> it is, then oh boy, I do not understand language. Yeah. But hey, so uh, so they, yeah. they all get lined up and they uh, they they get and obviously the entire time I'm thinking right, okay, I know that you know June's not going to die. Because she's the main character of the show. So the entire time I'm thinking, this has to be like a scare tactic. This is a swerve. They're going to stop it at the last second. That it's all just it's like, this is what's going to happen if you betray us again. If you, you know, because obviously, season finale, they all refuse to, to stone. You know, yeah. they all refuse to stone her. was and then to death because of the, because what she did in the bridge with the baby and all the rest of it. And I was like, okay. But I mean, like, did they do this really dark thing where they kill everyone but her? Because she's pregnant, she gets to, st- to live, but everyone else actually gets killed. And they don't. Um, but to its credit, despite the fact that I knew there was no way they were going to go through with doing it, it didn't actually take any of the drama out of the, the slow build and the you know the, the hooded man with the, the lever and all the rest of it. All of it worked. Yeah. No, that's true. I'm sucked into it. Yeah, no, I, I, I will say my, my, I'll get a, a criticism out of the way early. I think right. the first half of the episode goes a little too hard on the almost torture porn of just reminding you that it's, oh, this is all the awful things that we do. And it felt like a lot at once compared to what it was okay. before. All right. Like, it felt like here's a shock to, to remind you sort of thing. I'll be honest, I had way more shock with a thing at the end than I did any of the, t- the torture stuff in the first half. Oh, I know. I get that as well. But it's just you know, like, by, by the time I'm like twenty minutes in, and we're doing you know, like the, the hand burning, I'm like, sure, okay, yeah. I, I see what you're doing. Well, I get it. That worked for me more because obviously after like after the whole hanging or the, the almost hanging thing, and then it's like they're outside the school the next day and they're in the rain and they're all holding the stones, but they're you know they've been told to keep their hands out because obviously yeah. they're, they've always been doing this for a while because their arms are all really tired and they're struggling to keep the their arms up, and you know. Lydia finds out, so, oh, Offred's been keeping glorious news from us, oh yeah, divine light intervention, blah 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 blah, religious bollocks, right, and it's like, okay, so you come in now, and she goes to ring the bell, and because we've, we've heard the bell been rung before, but we actually see her go and, like, you know, go into the chamber, unlock the door, and ring the bell, the whole sort of, the minutiae of it all, uh, and she, like, you know, brings Offred uh, into, the, into the cafeteria, and sits her down with a tray of food and says, oh, you must eat it. Like, for the next nine months, you'll be treated well. You'll eat the right thing. You'll, you'll get the exercise you need. You'll get fresh air, everything you require so that that baby's uh, well and good and all the rest of it. 
And and again, going back to like how fantastic uh, Elizabeth Moss's acting is, this is the scene where I was reminded of all the little subtleties, especially since we're at a point now where she's kind of being rebellious and she's kind of saying, screw you, every chance she gets. Yeah. Um, because she's like, oh, I'm not hungry. And then, you know, Aunt Lydia goes on this big spiel about, you know, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and really hammers at home the, the 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 whole idea that she's the stern you know school teacher telling her you have to do this, and then says okay so now we have a bite to eat, and she just slays the tray back and she says I'm not hungry and there's just the slightest little smirk it's not a full on smile to show that she's being like overtly defiant but it's just enough of a smirk to say I know that I'm getting away with this at least she thinks she does she does yeah yeah uh, and I was like, oh man okay that that those, so those little moments those little just like almost smiles and the the way she gets away with little things and it's like oh um, like you, you feel like fist pumping every time it <laughs> every time she gets away with one of them is 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 really strong stuff, but of course uh, Aunt Lydia takes her to a pregnant handmaid who did fight back and tried to kill tried, a child. Tried to drink bleach, was it? Try yeah, tried to. Uh, I think it was a drain cleaner specifically. Uh, she tried to drink sure. that and kill her baby. So now she's held by chain in a room with a guard and it's all very awful and she seems very out of it and delirious and who knows what else they've been doing to her to, to I mean, obviously nothing that will physically harm her because they want the baby to be okay. But Yeah, they're, they're probably not drugging her or anything like that. Yeah. But everything else and it's just like and again, this show beating you down it's like, oh, just when you think you've got a little bit of a, a win, it's like, no, no, no. It's, you know, misery. Misery. Depression. Everything's doomed. You know, much- that, that was that was a lot of season one up and downs and it always kind of worked. Um, but the fact is, is I, I was fully expecting this season to be okay. The difference this season is that she's still with the family, she's still with Serena Joy, she's still with the Commander Fred, but she's pregnant, so that's a different story for season two. Like, I, I was really expecting that's what this was going to be. But, of course, by the time we actually get to the end of this episode, it's like, oh, no, they're shaking this up completely. This is a completely different Yeah, she's getting season. out of it. Yeah, um, you know, she's at the, the gynecologist and... And again, like again, this is like a weird flip and like a usual threat. But you know, Serena Joy comes in first. It's the first we've seen of her. And we first see her through the curtain. She's in shadow. Beautiful, you know, shot, intimidating. Because uh, again, this hospital is like so white and clinical. Like you know, beyond any actual hospital that exists, it's, yeah. it's probably the most science fictiony. The, the, the show it, is. It is. It's because it is. It is a science fiction show technically. Yeah, uh, no, it is. It's, a, it's, a, it's a future dystopia. It is, yeah. uh, but you know, it, it's. It's so rooted in reality that it often doesn't feel it until you get to rooms like this, where it's yeah. like, okay, I see the influence now. And you know, Serena Joy comes in, you're like, oh, you, you better not like, you know, harm my child or whatever. She's she's so proper into it. And this is the enough of these games, this smart girl bullshit that you've been doing. Because obviously, at this point, she knows about the Scrabble. She knows that, uh, you know, Alfred's actually a really smart person uh, if she's given half the chance to show it. Yeah. And she's like, oh, enough of this bullshit. You're not doing this anymore. And June just responds with, "Hey, we should calm down. Stress is bad for the baby." And again, it was one of those little victories, this little like you know passive aggressive little moment. And I think it's so unique because how 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 often does a pregnant woman like threaten someone by saying they'll harm the baby they're carrying, which is meant to be their baby? It's an unusual yeah. threat. It, it it is. It is. You know, I can't it's, say I've seen it that often. It's not something that comes up very often. It's actually really unique. So, yes, yeah. uh, so points. But so they have the exam, and you know, again, we have like June looking at them as they're happy, looking at the, the sonogram of the, the baby. Like you know, oh, it's there. You won't get a heartbeat yet. It's too early for that because obviously it's only five weeks. But and it's like this moment as well. She's looking at these people who are going to take this baby. Who's you know, neither of them are involved in this. Even right. the commander wasn't the one who impregnated her. It was it was Nick. So. Yes, exactly. This idea that this baby's going to be taken away, uh, again, the awful realities of all this, and just when you're at your worst, when you're really depressed about all this, just when you're you're really, you know, feeling miserable, is there's this other, you know, another one of the the, uh, the, the one of the doctors, I guess, uh, in the room, who as as he's leaving, you know, he says one of their little, you know religious things that they always say to each yeah, other yeah. blessed day praise under be. his eye yeah one of those and but just as he's leaving he's, he's, he adds on the word jun he calls her jun before he leaves and she her head snaps around he's like oh wait a minute okay yeah. who's this yeah. what's going on and you get you get this like this this fill of like hope almost like someone's here to help and oh, okay she's going to find something he's planked something for her and sure enough in her boot there's a key 
And I immediately thought, oh, is this a key to the house? Or is she going to escape later or what? But no, no, right away, there's like a little red mark on it, a little red square. And there's a little red square over this little door in the room. And she's like, okay. And then she gets outside, there's a little red square next to this, the stairwell she's to go down. And it's like, oh, they've marked, marked a path for her. It's like, pretty useful to have a master key, isn't it? Yeah, and it's really exciting. And But at the same, the show's been so good at making me think that we're screwed no matter what. That by the time she got down into the sort of the basement area and she was in like these dark tunnels with the the flashlight and she was like running around, the music was swelling up. I was like, this is going to snap back to her lying on the table still, right? This is all a fantasy. Like I really thought it was going to do that. Really? I legitimately thought they were going to do that. Did, did I don't? Did the show ever do that last year? I don't think it did. I don't. I don't recall it doing it, which is why I don't think that crossed my mind because I don't remember it ever setting up the the fantasy. Because I think there was a couple of times we thought it was. Uh, yeah, I remember mm. when. When she gave a big speech, and we thought it was, oh, this is a fantasy. You know, she's just. Oh yeah, I remember thinking that as well. Yeah. Um, but so so I think the fact that they didn't do it then that that's made me think, you know, that they're not going to do that anymore, which is probably the the ripe opportunity for them to exploit that. Uh, I mean, that's because I, I think it's the sort of thing they don't have to sell. That's a, that's just a valid technique. I think it can feel cheap, depending, but it can work if you've got a character who is going to fantasize about you know escaping or fantasize I, about I, whatever. I think there's this, it's because they actively did the opposite so in my head mm. that's just against the rules right now for them to do that which is why they'll completely which is why they will yeah. do it at some point they'll completely pull the rug out from under you because you think ah, they'll never do that because they've not done it the last yeah. two times so exactly they won't do it this time uh but no it's just and she ends up in the back of like a a meat truck you know a, you know you know cool truck and she's freezing her ass off but as soon as she gets in like the driver knows she's in it starts moving i'm like oh this is all just an elaborate escape like they've set this up for her to... it's, a, it's a proper ruse this isn't it yeah and she's in there for a while and obviously we'll talk about the flashbacks a bit later but you know it cuts to a flashback and we come back and then this guy like just like brings her out he's like hey come in here don't stay inside don't go to the windows uh, someone will come for you and you'll, you'll be fine and actually like one of the most heartfelt little moments in the episode is when she just hugs him and gives him a kiss in the cheek and says thank you it's like like it's so rare for her to actually have anyone like show her kindness in this world, and given her, like how much of a dire strait she's she's in right now, and the awful things she's been through, the awful things that you know they're going to put her through while she's pregnant and eventually taking the baby and everything else. Uh, I mean, you know, the masked men brought them all out to the gallows and like basically convinced them that they were being hung until the last possible second, where oh no, the trap door's not going to, not actually yeah. going to fall. So. Uh, like and it, it's funny. Like even though it's been a year since season one, even though it's been all this time, the moment still plays with all the weight of everything that happened in season one. Uh, it does. It to, does. Yeah. To, to its credit, I feel like everything feels very fresh. Nothing feels like oh, I can only vaguely remember or anything like that. Everything yeah, feels. There, there was there was a pretty good previously on that caught me up on yeah. all the major beats. There of anything that I nothing that I felt like oh I'd forgotten that, but more just oh that was a nice refresher. Oh, it was. Yeah, it's nice to get that. And it was a good, nice, good like three minute or so previously yeah. on it gave, gave gave you everything even things that weren't relevant to this episode because uh off glenn you know the original off glenn who of course you know went away quite early on last season and we had uh, we, we spent the whole season expecting it to come back up and just nothing ever happened and i'm it. still expecting it now especially since they reminded of his of, of her existence but they did show that shot of her running over the guy with the car and he, yes. his, his body going splat i i mean this is not the show that i come to to like for the oh the fun gore but that was a fun gore moment <laughs> It was, it was. <laughs> especially when it's the, the the dictators and the you know their version of the SS who are getting smashed. It's way and... more satisfying when it's that way around, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's, it's way more it's, satisfying. At that point, it's satisfying fun gore instead of okay, this is kind of horrific. I, I think even the way it played it, though, because it was more like a gore explosion, whereas everything with the with the handmaids and everything, it's all very slow and sort of disturbing and mm. kind of you know all that kind of stuff. So, and you really feel it as oh god no, uh, but. Uh, it's actually Nick. We've not seen Nick all episode. Nick like steps out. It's actually him with his eye contacts who've actually uh, rescued her. Because uh, I wasn't sure where it was going. I wasn't sure who did this. I wasn't sure. You know, was it the resistance? Was it, you know, uh, was it was it Luke and Moira? Like something to do with them and what they've set up elsewhere? Or what? yeah, we we didn't really know because. There was no hint at this until it just happened. It, but this is this is the thing. This is something that season one does. It, it does it with the camera work a lot, where we only get what June actually experiences and sees yeah, herself. Very very close. Very close. Short field of view. And again, it's the same with uh, at the start. I loved how this was shot when they came out of the tunnel and she she realizes in a stadium and she's just looking around. It's not until she turns around and sees the gallows that we see them as well. Like it, it things are only revealed to us as it's revealed to her. So. For her, it's a completely, oh, this is happening out of nowhere, but it's my chance, I'm going to take it. So you're with her in that. You don't know who's doing this. You're just 
t- you're just trusting it because what else have you got? You know, yeah. you know. At this point, nothing to lose, right? So, pretty much. So, but no, it's Nick. And it's like, okay, you're going to stay here for a bit, um, and then when it's safe to move you out of the city, we'll try and do that. Uh, and obviously, so that set up a big bit of the plot of the season. But the really symbolic thing, and this made a lot more sense because I saw the poster for season two. It was her holding her, you know, her hat thing. Uh, right. and it was on fire, and I was like, oh, all of a sudden, this this, this like really makes sense to be the thematic start of the season now. Uh, because he's like, okay, take your clothes off. You need to cut your hair. Obviously, she's going to be trying to hide in plain sight, so you know, don't want the long hair being obvious. And she takes off her, you know, a red gown and the, the hat and all that. And she she has this moment where she like sees the furnace and she's like, yeah, I'm burning this shit. <laughs> and she puts it all in, douses it, and sets it on fire. Uh, and it's this really nice thematic moment of yeah. Regardless of what happens, if I get caught, I'm looking back to this. You know, I, either I'm escaping or I'm dying now. I'm I'm not. You know, I'm never going back to that life at this point. Yeah, it's it's funny because this episode kind of feels like a prologue. Yeah, to the rest of the season, and it's funny because this season is three episodes longer. This is a thirteen episode season. You're right, it is. Yeah, uh, compared to ten from last year. So, uh, uh, but uh, honestly, yeah, the, the pacing like, this went in really quick for me. I thought I, again. Oh yeah, that, that wasn't a criticism oh, yeah. of, of that. I just it is because it, it's often these sorts of shows where you'll have like at, at the end of the season you'll have like an epilogue. Hmm. But we didn't have that last season. So instead, we kind of got a, a prologue here, setting up the start of the season. Kind of, yeah. Um, it's such a serialised show that I'm sure it'll just feel seamless. But yeah, in a lot of ways, it is, it's, it's, this is the the statement. This is what this yeah, season's going like, to be. Okay, here, here's what you can expect going forward. Yeah. Um, so it's a great big moment. And then she's like, oh, the tag in her ear. She's cutting her hair and she sees the tag in her ear and she's like, I want rid of that. And I, like, this, this is one of those, like, I, I'm fine with most gore. Most things don't bother me. But actually cutting into her ear with the scissors was making me squirm. Really? Something awful. Yeah, I, I, I actually audibly let out like a... Mm! <laughs> as it was happening. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm okay on this one. I never, I never do that. But just cutting... Like, this is the thing. See, when it's like flesh, it doesn't bother me as much. But because it's because it's, it's so like bendy and rubbery. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so... I, I understand it. I, oh. It didn't bother me in the same way it has you. But I, I understand why ears are a bit different. Yeah, um, yeah. Ears, obviously, eyeballs are a thing for most people, and I, I kind yeah, of agree I, with that. I, I'm, I'm with them on the eyeballs. Yeah, uh, the back of the ankle is another one that can if they if they cut the back of the ankle. That that one, yeah. Have you have you ever seen someone that slaps the back of the ankle slash and it just splits in half? Yeah, yeah, but hasn't bothered uh, you? Not really, no. All right. What about <laughs> this? Is a weird way to bring up. But have you ever seen Antichrist? <laughs> I've seen the bit you're referring to. Did that bother you? Did that bothers me. Good, good. I think, uh, I think you're not human. That... You're not human if that doesn't bother you in that movie. Yeah. yeah. I, I've not seen the whole movie, but I've seen that bit. <laughs> Why did you I seek was... out that clip? I didn't. Someone I was living with okay. put it on and went, hey guys, check this out. She, she's, and it's this big thing as well, because cause the, the blood's like th- 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 flowing down the side of her face and it's going down, going, all going down her. And she has to, you know, at first it's too painful, she has to stop, and then she's like, I'm going back for it, and she cuts in deeper, and then finally pulls the tag off. And, you know, I, I think there's obviously some very s- visual symbolism here of, you know, being covered in blood, that she's been rebirthed, she's been birthed anew. Uh, like... I think it's particularly notable, given that she just took all the red off to be left in white, and mm. then immediately soaks it in red again. Yeah, but it's her red. She owns this red. It, it is, but I think it's the idea that, okay... It's a different path, but it's kind of still similar. It's like, you know, it's, it's okay, she's not free yet. She's still, like, okay, it's her blood. It's still red. It, well, it isn't, isn't it? it she's, obviously, this, this world that she's been in still exists, but uh, this, is her, like, this is her choosing this red. So she's, yeah. by definition, she is living, choosing to live freely instead of what she was before. Even if that freedom means death as soon as she's caught, it's still True, more free. You know, it, it's her this choice. show is never particularly subtle, is it? Uh, for, for, as, as good as it is, uh, you know, there's the whole big speech about freedom from Aunt Lydia. Oh yeah, there's freedom for all and freedom too. We're giving you freedom from the the awful barbaric yeah. world. But now she is free to do what she wants, essentially. Yeah. No, no, no. It all works, but all of it works really well. The final shot of her like standing back up, and it's the light from the window, and it's just this new profile shot. It's, it's stunning. Like, the direction has not skipped a beat. No, no, it hasn't. Uh, every, every single scene was like ha- having these little moments the way it was handled uh, ba- basically the way I'd describe the direction is this is so many shots are where you're kind of holding your breath along with her for the next moment yeah it's very suspenseful in that way it works really well um, 
and it's, she's very sort of empowered by the end of the episode. And you feel like, okay, now she's she's an Offred now, or a June, I should say. I should really should use a real name if I can. Uh, she's a June now who's going to fight back uh, in yeah. some way. Uh, it'll be difficult, sure, and there's a lot of stuff to do. There's, we, have to, we still have to get to her daughter somehow, we have to get to her husband somehow. Like, there's a lot of things to do beyond yeah. just like, getting away. But Yeah, uh, yeah so a, I will say I was a little disappointed because obviously the ending moment is we finally get the inner monologue. Well, we have a little bit of it uh, at the title as well. Right, right, but that that was kind of one of one of my big disappointments. The episode is I didn't get the monologue reacting to any of the other stuff that was happening at the facility. It's like I get why thematically it works. Yeah, but no, I, I'll, I really I'll defend wanted this. to hear some of it. I'll I'll defend this because I think two 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 reasons here. One, at the end of the episode, it is like, oh, she's really back now. She's you know this like you know, uh, it's actually very similar to a thing that House of Cards did at the start of season two, bizarrely. Um, I mean, obviously, this is a much better show than that. At least I think it is. Uh, but and the other thing it does as well, of course, is that she is in a different place than she ha- she was all of season one, right? Like she's in a different place, and it's the idea that she doesn't get her voice back internally even until the end of the episode because she's back to feeling hope or some of some kind again. Like I said, I get it thematically. I, I understand it. It makes sense. It it, it works. I was just I, I wanted to hear some of that confusion you know you know like, okay this is all so new this this foreign place i wanted mm. to hear some of how that was affecting her internally as well like you know it, to see if she was as beaten as she appeared at points or if she was still even there like she's like no, no no it's fine but again i, th- I think it's a narrative device i think it's them saying her mind is more blank than it normally is perhaps it is i, I like i said i understand mm. it it's just, it was disappointing to me uh well yeah, you're gonna have 12 more episodes of it it's fine i know i know they've made the point it was very effective um and honestly all that stuff with the escape being silent i actually think really worked, worked really well like i yeah i think it added to the mood of it almost uh, not that her narration would have killed it it would have been very different uh but i think that's maybe why it was so exciting as well is that because she typically is narrating over these things and she has given her thoughts on it it gave it a different atmosphere than it maybe normally does that's fair in other situations so uh I, no, I, th- I think all that that works really well for me um but of course, I do like the the what uh, inner monologue, and I'm sh- I have no doubt we'll have tons of it now from. Yeah. Like, like I say, it's not like it's not so much a critique, more just uh, my personal preference and opinion on it. Yeah. Um. So of course, of course, because uh, that's the thing. After she's in the truck, we actually cut to a scene of the commander and uh, Serena Joy actually talking about the fact that she's missing. Like, oh no, 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 we're putting trips out everywhere because we've got a missing handmaid and she's with child. Like, oh, she's actually gone. That, that was the moment that confirmed to me this wasn't all just some fantasy. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. This, this is it. Priority one. Let's get her back. Yeah. So that's really exciting. Obviously, we had flashbacks as well uh, to... And obviously, we've jumped around a lot in the flashbacks. This seems to be... When things are getting going, we're obviously not at a military state yet, but, you know, we're at this stage where uh, she needs her, you know, his look signature to like buy certain things and and stuff of that yeah, nature. But, but she's still allowed to work. She's still allowed to work for now. Yeah, she's because we've seen her job before and she's at our our job because we actually recognised her desk and you know, yeah, and, and that's it's it's quite an important point too when she goes to the hospital as well. Yeah, uh, because the nurse basically berates her. Um, and like, hey, so you work full time. You that, you know, your husband works full time, and we find out the school has this like heavy policy of like, if there's a fever at all, like they have to be home for two days before they come back after they've that's, lost a fever. Uh, uh, that's a pretty normal policy in uh, in, in my experience. Oh sure, but uh, I mean, I wouldn't expect the fallout to be like this. No, I, I think you know it, it's played much harsher. Yeah, but yeah, you know, that that policy is yeah, I think that's pretty common. I, mean, I, I didn't know of any such policy when I was in school. But... Uh, it, it wasn't um, fever for, for my school. It was specifically if you'd thrown up. Um, that was it. Two days, you can't be in school because they don't want to spread anything. Because, because when they talk about it here, it sounds like it's a, like a, a nationwide... Like, like they all have these rules that are really harsh now because of... Like... Yeah, yeah, maybe, like, like I said, but like, that, that was pretty common to just to stop the spread of disease because you know kids they're all packed in pretty tight it's, it's oh sure it's... like no i mean it was recommended to not to not go back to school if you were obviously oh, but... no, it, was, it was a hard rule in my school um but you know i i don't recall i mean i certainly never encountered it so uh 
I mean, it makes sense. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Um, but the way it's used here is very severely punished. It's very, no, no, you're clearly being a bad parent. You should probably give up your job because you can't be at home with your child. Like, that's basically what she implies. And there's yeah. even a small moment uh, of racism as well when she's like... Because, don't get me wrong, there's nothing necessarily wrong with asking, oh, is the child biologically yours? But the way she phrases it, the way the, the you know the, the inflex in her face as she says says that line, there's clearly a little bit of like, oh, so so you you have a mixed relationship then? Like there, there was kind of an implication there, I thought, from the way she yeah, said that. Okay, uh, I didn't get it from that, to be honest, but no, no, I, I, I was I was getting some of this because obviously we know that. Uh, you know, when when once Gilead forms, like you know, they they're, they're hanging gay people and everything else, so it makes sense to me that there's a there's the racism goes along with it. I, I think that's something that's going to be really interesting to see this this season. The the especially the the present day by our standards, yeah, you know, the flashback stuff. Mm. Because obviously, season one was written you know pre twenty sixteen election, <laughs> which is yeah yeah uh, <laughs> so. Uh, which you know, so it was very topical at the time, even then. But now it's like it's a it's a whole different ball game. Which is funny because I almost think they don't have to even change it, and it was it was so on point with all of that that it almost doesn't even have to. Right, change. I think that's almost my worry is if they go too on the nose rather than just sticking the course. Um, well, I don't see any evidence of any no, changes no, there, in this there, one. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm just I like I say I just I, I hope they don't reference anything in particular. Um, this is you coming up with worries based on nothing. You always do uh, this. It's just not, I'm just it's it's just taking the fact that it's a, a possibility. I'm just I'm just putting out there. I'm like in this is the episode one. I'm like yo, what I'm expecting from the season. I hope this doesn't happen. Okay. I'm not gonna mention it again unless it happens. <laughs> You always do this. So you always do this at the start of a season. You always say, "I hope we don't do this," and "I hope we don't do that." You always bring up tons of things. You you come up with all these scenarios of things they'll do that'll piss you off, and you're like, "Oh, I hope we don't do this." It's just something that crossed my mind. I was like, "Oh, you know what? I, I hope it stays on point to true, true to what it is, and not you know, okay, let's cash in a little bit." <sighs> Give them some credit. Like I said, just it's just something I mentioned once, unless it happens. But no, we get you know, like uh, like surely after season one they have some benefit of the doubt not to assume they're going to do anything like that. There's know. lots of things you could say. Oh, I hope we don't do this. Yeah, I hope they don't have like some silly action sequence in episode three where a plane cl- crashes and then someone cocks a shotgun and says, "I'm going to kill all the bad guys" because that would feel kind of weird in the show. Sure, but what I'm talking about is a much smaller thing and and <laughs> much more plausible to happen. <sighs> we'll see. <laughs> We'll say, we'll uh, I'm not going. Yeah, don't don't do a big plane crash. That's that's a completely different scenario. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The the the, the <laughs> by the time we get to the end of the season, it may or may not be Mad June Gilead Road. All right, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey, if they can get me to there in a believable way, I'll watch it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so we see this stuff, and we see that. Uh, like she's just heavily criticised for for not like basically saying that she's an unfit mother, even though she's not. Like literally, she she did what she thought was right. It sounds like a reasonable thing for a parent to assume is like, oh, it's a bit of a fever. I'll give, give them some some medicine and send them on their way. It wasn't that bad, and she's heavily criticised for it. I mean, you know, maybe it's a mistake, but you know what? Parents make mistakes. That's in the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. The, the implication was that they they that she didn't want to take the lose the money from a day off work essentially to just look after a sick kid yeah obviously a foreshadowing of oh this is why women shouldn't work because they should be home to look after the children all the time exactly uh, and that that sort of attitude that, that's definitely what they're getting at there and then even like when she gets back and like looks watching the tv and there's been some big attack and you know in washington and the white house is blown up and all the rest of it and you know she's trying to like you'll pay attention to the news and ask look what's going on but her, you know her kids like, hey, mom, stop, come sleep with me, come, come, don't leave me, by, you know, alone. Yeah. And she's literally at one point like halfway between her and the, the the front room with Luke and the TV, and she has to like sort of make this choice to go and and it's almost like she, she's like, she's let it get to her where she's like, no, I have to go be the perfect mother right now, even though this is clearly important stuff that I should be aware of that's happening yeah, yeah, and, exactly. and all that. Um, so it it really got those points across and um. Yeah, I, I think it's done a good job with the flashbacks. I think obviously some we've seen other shows with flashbacks kind of like 
lose their way a bit. Lose their way. And obviously this show never doesn't have a flashback every episode necessarily, but whenever it's done flashbacks, it's always been very relevant, very thematically uh, on yeah. point topics and, and scenes. So, you know, it's, it's Also, it's, it's nice to get a bit of a puzzle because we are jumping around the, the timeline all the time. Like, you know, we've had flashbacks from right before... Like the start of the show, we've had flashbacks, you know, to before anything started happening. It was just her meeting Luke and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. So, be curious to see how all this uh, plays out. Um, but no, I, I thought this was a fantastic uh, return. Uh, this first yeah, episode. Yeah, I thought it was pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, uh, direction not must have beat. I have to say so. Uh, no, great stuff. Great, great first episode back. So, yeah, look forward to watching episode two. We'll have the review up for that probably tomorrow, so you can look forward to that pretty quickly. And then it's one a week for the rest of the season. Uh, I mean, maybe they'll do a double at the end or something, but uh, at least until then, uh, one a week. So we'll, we'll assume it's that. Yeah. So, so that is us. Uh, by all means, let us know what you thought of the episode. In the comments below, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitter's at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. There's a link in the description. You can do that over there. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. And you can also find the audio versions of this in our uh, one of our uh, podcast feeds. There's a link in the description to that as well. Uh, so, but that is us. So, thank you once again. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>